let me get started with a little background stuff, so a few things that I think are, are some stuff we need to try to keep an eye on in the market in this day and age. First off, I have a couple, let me pan through, here we go. Uh, in the news, and this is going to mesh a little bit or maybe even quite a bit into some of the stuff Grayson's going to talk about. And one thing we've been seeing time and time again in the news lately, here we got John Hancock is raising premiums at a stunning level on their standalone long-term care policies. Now they're a big name in that business, and it's not, we're not picking on Hancock here. This is, we're seeing this kind of thing across the board, but this came out a couple of weeks ago, up to 90% increase in premiums on standalone LTC products. And now we're also seeing in the last year Prudential, MetLife, and CAN, which is a, which is a California-based uh, standalone LTC uh, carrier, have all left the business. So gradually what we're seeing here, and actually even right, right now more even at an increasing rate rather than a gradual rate, standalone LTC is, some, is really a dying breed. Uh, actuaries are having trouble pricing it with uh, new life expectancies, especially lifetime benefit style uh, standalone LTC. And that's really playing into the asset-based care style uh, LTC and, and illness benefit kind of products. Grayson's going to highlight some of those for us here in a while. But uh, we, we've, we've seen more things in the news too time and time again about claims being denied on on LTC, and, and it, it's really turning into quite a, quite a quagmire there, but Grayson will get into that a little bit more for us. I'm going to cover a couple more issues here, and then I will turn it over to him. Uh, I see a lot of familiar names on the attendees list of today's webinar, so uh, if you've been on our webinar before, you're probably not shocked to see this chart. I like to talk about this. This is the bond yield chart going back to the early 1960s. And I think this one says it's to January 3rd. That's just the way Yahoo runs it. I don't think, I think this is to, uh, from early January of 62 to very recently. It doesn't really matter. The point's still valid. If you see right down here towards the tail end of it, we're looking at 2% bond yields on, on 10-year notes uh, right in that range. And that's what most of our insurance carriers have a huge portion of their assets, their reserves are in this style of, of uh, investment. And as we see, we're at, we're at lifetime lows for, for all of us. So when you, when you look out there and you're, you're, trying to, you're trying to design a case for a client or try to reposition some assets for one of your clients and you're not seeing the kind of products, the kind of big bonus products on your annuities and and uh, guaranteed payout rates of four, five, six percent. Well, this is why uh, the rates are just low across the board, and we're expecting them to stay low for quite some time. So, and that again is going to morph into some of the stuff we're going to talk about later, because this is really, really, and that's why every time you come to see a Silverside webinar, better than better than even chance, you're going to have to listen to me talk about this chart or something similar, because this is really a huge driving force of what we're seeing in the products that are available today. And it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. There's really not much way around it for us. Uh, so one thing we suggest here for agents when they say, okay, well, I need leads. I need, I, I need to make a living too. Who should I talk to? What can I talk to them about? One thing we think is often overlooked is doing annual reviews with existing clients. If you went to a client two, three, four years ago, maybe they had $100,000 they were looking to do something with, and you put them into a fixed indexed annuity, you got them a nice bonus, or maybe you got them a nice guaranteed rate, or you got them something really attractive, and you figure, well, they don't have any more money in a sock or sitting in a CD or whatever, so there's really, there's really not a lot I can do with them. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you go back and we're seeing a lot of in the market today, and it's driven off of that bond chart, that I just showed you, positive MVAs, a lot of fixed indexed annuities, fixed annuities. Uh, a, a lot of the products we've been using in the last several years have an MVA, market value adjustment feature in there. And what that, that's to, designed for is to protect the insurance company 
from having large amounts of redemptions of annuities when rates go higher. Well, we're kind of on the, the, the flip side of that right now, and as I showed you, bond, bond rates and rates in general are about as low as we could conceive of. So a lot of those MVAs where they're designed to uh, protect the carriers and give them some room to make an extra charge on early redemptions, it's actually worked to the client's advantage right now. There's a lot of positive MBA. So if you have a client or you have an acquaintance or somebody you know who has, who in the last two, three, maybe four years has gotten into an annuity, possibly some of the names to look for would be Allianz, Aviva, Midland North American. We're seeing a lot of positive MBAs. In fact, the other day I was looking at a, at a situation with an agent. He had a, a client with an Allianz annuity, he was about two and change years old. The surrender value was higher than the account value. And that's still, he had a, a few years of surrender charges left. The MVA was positive enough that they were actually in a situation where Aviva was going to pay him to surrender that policy early, pay the surrender charge, but with the MVA credit back, it was going to be a net gain for the client. So basically, the client has instant liquidity. So what could you do with it? Well, you could put it in another product, pick up another bonus, uh, you know, it's basically free and clear to do whatever is most appropriate at this time. So, and consequently, the agent has an opportunity to pick up another commission while enhancing his client's position. So that's always something we, that's a great situation to find ourselves in when we can do a bunch of good for a client and pick up a nice commission. Another thing you can do on annual reviews, uh, you, can, you can look and say, well, uh, what, you have an annuity here and it has a free withdrawal provision or maybe it has an annuitization option after a certain number of years where you can annuitize it for a minimum number of years penalty free. Well, if you ask your client or your prospect, what do you, what's your intention with this annuity? If they say to you, well, nothing, we really, that's just kind of some money that's probably going to go to our kids or our grandkids someday, but we put it in there because we were getting a better rate on it than we were getting on a CD. Well, uh, one option might be if your client's still healthy enough to qualify for life insurance, they could take the free withdrawals or, or the annuitization out of that. We could, we could look for a guaranteed UL or a product of that type fund the guaranteed UL, maybe get two or three times the death benefit for their heirs, which is what they've designated this annuity for, is for an uh, inheritance for their heirs, get two or three times the death benefit tax-free. So that might be an option for money you thought was tied up, but once again, you can do your client a heck of a service, you can enhance their position, and you can pick up a, a nice commission. Uh, also, with free withdrawals or, or, or something to that effect, if, if you don't want to go the life insurance route, you could, uh, you could capture a new bonus with it. Uh, you could take, if an annuity was big enough, you could take a 10% withdrawal. Maybe if they have two, three hundred thousand dollars, you put 20, 30 grand in a new annuity, pick up a new bonus for them. If it's money they don't need the liquidity on, or if it's a situation where they don't need the liquidity of the annuity, you could capture a new bonus, pick up a new sale. There's a lot of options for reviewing your client's situations even if you thought most of their money was tied up because of a product you, you put them in or somebody else did in the last few years. So uh, one product that we like to feature that might be good for that, this is a Sagicor 9-year fixed index annuity. It, uh, this is really an annuity right now that's above the market. In a low rate environment, uh, you're not going to find something with this many features all at once. This is one of our favorites. 5% uh, immediate bonus all the way to age 85. A four and a half uh, annual point to point. S&P annual point to point with a four and a half cap. That's way above the market. It's got a nice feature where the free withdrawals actually accumulate up to 50%. You can take 10% after year one. If you don't take 10% after year one, 20 after year two accumulates all the way up to 50%. That makes this the most liquid annuity on the market from any major carrier you're going to find. Has a 2% guarantee on 100% of premium. 
and that will illustrate. We that we have a uh, a company uh, illustration we can do for you. It will illustrate a guaranteed positive surrender value after two years with that. And this has no MVA. So with the bond rates down at 2%, we're probably not likely to see MVAs work to clients' advantage anytime soon. Uh, so we'd probably just as soon have a product that doesn't have one, and this one doesn't. If for some reason your client needed to surrender the entire policy or surrender more than the, the free withdrawal amount, Early, they would still have to pay a surrender charge, but they wouldn't get double dinged and have to pay an MVA as well. And uh, this is an excellent rated carrier. So that's really, if you're looking for a simple, clean, nine-year annuity product, you're, you're really going to be hard-pressed to beat that one. But uh, enough of that. Let's move on here. i got one or two more ideas, and then I'll get this to Grayson. Um, one thing I wanted to point out, most of the attendees here on the webinar today are either contracted with Silverside or they're in the process of either getting contracted or considering contracting. One thing, we've recently partnered up with superagenttools.com. Uh, we do not own Superagent Tools. Superagent Tools does not own us. It's a contractual arrangement where we can offer this. It's the most powerful agent support platform available today. We can offer it to Silverside contracted agents for no cost. And we have a demo for you. We actually did a webinar that I have recorded uh, with one of the uh, designers of Super Agent Tools. We can either send you a link to the webinar and or we have a tutorial that will give you an idea about the power of this system. And actually, they're in the middle of upgrading it with a new version that's going to be iPad friendly. And it's, it's going to have a couple of, of cool new features. It's going to do more of tracking uh, database uh, CRM kind of things where you can track your clients and track your business and all those kinds of things. Very powerful platform, available free. So uh, all, all we ask is that you get contracted and put a good percentage of your business with us and we can provide you with this. Again, you're going to need to see either either the webinar, recorded webinar I did, or, uh, or the tutorial to really grasp what this thing can do for you. But if you're interested in that, give us a call. Uh, we'll get you more information, and that's really something I think everybody is going to be excited about. So I'm going to go to my thank you uh, slide right now, which is not the final. That is giving me the cue to turn the, the presentation over to Grace. And Grace, and thanks for turning it over. Thanks for coming out, guys. I'm going to talk for about 30 minutes, and um, we're I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. So go ahead and write our number down so you can call up and get all your questions that we don't get to answered. 480-998-1286. Um, give us a call uh, because I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. I'm going to try to talk about this from 10,000 feet. Um, just an overview. Not going to get too into the numbers, but just so that this thing does take you know, the asset-based care world, what is possible out there, just so it takes shape in your mind a little bit. I am going to go through a couple of specific examples with numbers. I just don't want to get too worked up um, over those numbers. But follow me here. Things are really changing in America. And it's not all bad, but I am going to focus on one part of America that is getting bad. And it's the retirement landscape changing with the America's getting older, plain and simple. And here's, here's a fact um, that you need to present to your seniors because it's, it's, and retirees. It's a difficult, people don't want to talk about it, but they need to talk about it because 70% of seniors, and we're talking about 65 plusers, will need some sort of long-term care. They have not heard that statistic before. 90% of them have no private long-term care insurance coverage. Medicare is not going to pay for it. Um, and just like Rick said, a lot of the big standalone long-term care insurance companies are leaving the business um, with long-term care costs growing at a rapid pace. And longevity, the, the uh, average age continues, it continues higher. It is turning out to be absolutely devastating for seniors and their finances, and it has to be addressed. Um, it, you, so I'll do workshops all, actually all around the country in, in front of groups of retirees, sometimes 
people still working but about to retire, maybe their late 50s, something like that. And I'll ask people, so I'll present this statistic. 70% of you statistically don't have long-term care. Why? Number one response every single time is because it's so expensive. Um, the second one is generally, hey, this is it's, it's another insurance. You know, if I keep paying money and a lot of it to these uh, insurance carriers and I don't end up needing long-term care, the money's gone. Um, they also get confused on the fine print, what is actually covered by their long-term care policy. You know, claim denials, Rick referenced that too. It's kind of, it's a, a, a lot of retirees, soon to be retirees, are actually afraid of that. And I understand why. This is, this is what we do. And I have a tough time figuring out sometimes looking at, at standalone long-term care insurance contracts exactly what is covered. Um, another thing, the underwriting can be intimidating. A lot of retirees have in their minds that they have to be in pristine health to get coverage. And they don't want to go through underwriting. They don't, they don't, that's, that's an intimidating thing for a lot of people, and that's understandable as well. So these are all the issues why people don't have coverage. Well, what if we could show you something that addresses all of these issues? What if we give you a tool that you can show your retirees and seniors, uh, a tool that addresses all of these issues? Um, it needs to be addressed. I get, a, I get a kick out of this because, hey, this is, I can't stress it enough, this is the pink elephant, the next financial crisis in America. Do you realize, and just some more statistics to try to scare everybody, do you realize within a few years, those numbers I just ran through, 90% not having coverage, 70% of, of people over 65 needing some sort of help, that is going to, the number of people exposed to that, part of the 70%, part of the 90%, 30 million Americans will be exposed. They, 30 million Americans will need some sort of coverage and have no coverage, need some sort of help and have no coverage. That's the pink elephant, ladies and gentlemen. So when you, it, it, it when you sit down and you talk to, Rick mentioned um, going through an annual review, this has to be something that you add into what you talk to your clients about. Do you have some coverage for long-term care? If not, hey, we need to talk about this. And keep in mind, before I even get started on the individual annuity and life policies, keep in mind when you sit down and talk to seniors, a lot of them fancy themselves self-insurers, and that's exactly what we're looking for. And I will show you why, because if, you're, if a, a senior client of yours is a self-insurer, they're going to use their own money. We're going to show you tools that can take their own money and leverage it up and make it tax-free for long-term care. So it's really a no-brainer for your self-insurers. I overshot. Uh, hey, uh, Grayson. Uh, yeah. Your your volume is varying. Your volume is varying quite a bit. Um, I don't know if you got a loose connection on your microphone there. It's 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 pretty good for a little bit. And then it kind of kind of okay. fades. Sorry. Can you hear me a little clearer now? Yeah. That that sounds good. Okay, guys. The the big thing that recently changed is the Pension Protection Act. Okay, this was in 2006, but the, the part that really affects us it, uh, took effect in 2010. And plain and simple, seniors can take withdrawals from specially designated annuities, income tax-free, uh, for long-term care. Now, it, it, I don't want to get too confusing about this, but when when sometimes when clients hear about this, they say to me, well, you know, if, if I'm withdrawing from an annu another annuity and um, I'm spending it on long-term care, I can write that off my taxes anyway. Well, yes, but the check the, the last line that I put there in yellow. We can not only uh, turn tax deferred into tax free, uh, but we can also leverage someone's tax deferred money leverage it way up and make it tax-free. So if you have a $100,000 annuity, uh, we can leverage it 
to five hundred and fifty thousand dollars and make it tax free. So the 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 tax implications do not misunderstand them. It is a, an incredibly powerful tool. If you have retirees that have older annuities, and that by older I mean they're down to there's the surrender schedule is down to three, maybe four percent or less, um, and then there are some tax deferred gains on those annuities. And your client has no long-term care coverage. This it has to be. You have to show this to them, okay? Because you're leveraging tax deferred and making it tax-free. I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, guys. Um, so the product basics on an annuity, and again, I'm just going to go through some specifics on one product, but there are a bunch of different strategies out there. Um, this particular annuity product coming out of an AM Best uh, A-plus carrier, uh, this is a, a typical single premium, doesn't have to be a single premium, but a deferred fixed rate annuity um, has a built-in continuation of benefits leverage for long-term care. Kind of, if you're familiar with those income rider annuities that are out that have gotten very popular, similar concept. There's an income rider, a long-term care income rider kind of attached to these things. Again, tax-free withdrawals coming out for long-term care. The two pools of money, like I just said, this can be a single or a joint annuity, single annuity with an eligible person. So when you're when you're thinking about the clients that you want to talk to about some asset based care maybe they just got dropped by John Hancock or the the premiums went up so high they don't want to deal with it anymore um, think about where the assets are uh, that your client would use to pay for long term care and if it is from an older annuity um, it's a per absolutely perfect even if you have a husband and wife and the older annuity is in one of their names you can add the other one as an eligible person. Um, it, again, the, the, the numbers aren't really important, but just so it takes a little bit better shape in your mind, after one year, this particular annuity, $100,000 accumulating a little bit, just a normal deferred annuity, but the bang for the buck is in that continuation of benefits, so their total value that they can use tax-free for long-term care goes from 100000 maybe it's uh, in a 10-year-old annuity, um, now it's $556,000 tax-free they can use for long-term care. Um, fast forwarding 10 years, there's some more accrual, obviously as Rick was talking about, interest rates are low, so there's not any grand accrual here, but again, the, the, the core competency is if the, they, they really leverage their own money up. They are self-insurers, well they just leverage up their self-insuring. Um, so I just showed $600,000 available for long-term care. How do they access that? Portion is going to come out uh, monthly up to 138 months and it can be an indemnity. Um, and if you're not familiar, you haven't done a lot of underwritten products, you're not familiar, in a nutshell, a reimbursement is exactly that. Your client would have to spend the money, uh, justify the expenditures as long-term care expenditures and get reimbursed by the insurance company. Um, if it is an indemnity, priced out as an indemnity, they get they do have to spend some money on long-term care, but they don't have to justify every expense and provide receipts. Uh, They're simply getting one uh, amount every month. So the trigger is a pretty typical chronic illness type trigger. Uh, licensed physician or care provider, <coughs> excuse me, signing off that they need help with two out of six activities of daily living for 90 days or more, or they're cognitively impaired. This particular product, and there are a lot of moving parts on all these different products, so let us, let us design a case specifically for one of your clients. One of the moving parts is an elimination period uh, and waiting period, but there's no waiting period on this product. <clears throat> so another one of the moving parts is the underwriting. If you haven't done a lot of underwriting on this particular product, don't let it intimidate you. It is simplified. Uh, 
We have some fully underwritten products for a bigger bang for the buck. If you have a 70-year-old that's a marathon runner and can get through that. We even we have uh, some strategies for people that absolutely could not pass underwriting and don't even want to go down that road. We have some strategies with, with uh, some leveraged up account values for long-term care for them. We even have strategies for your super seniors, maybe someone 80 plus, who already needs care. And they simply want to guarantee a ceiling uh, a maximum amount that they will ever pay for long-term care. We even have strategies for that. Um, this particular, which is, it, it, the simplified underwriting is pretty typical for a lot of these products. The simplified underwriting, if you're familiar with the table system, goes to about a table four. Um, so if you have a client that really, in, in the last five years, hasn't had internal cancer, hasn't had serious heart issues, and whatever condition they have is controlled, they're probably going to fit inside the table four. They're going to fit inside this simplified underwriting, and there's some good leverage that they can get out of these products. Past that, the leverage obviously is going to be less. You still have strategies, so don't let that deter you. The simplified underwriting, in this particular case, phone interview, 12 questions on the application about their medical history, um, but no exams. No exams. You don't have to do that with the blood draws and all that sort of thing. Only if you have a super healthy client that, that really wants to get a bigger bang for their buck and wants to go the full underwriting should we even address that. So, hey, in a nutshell, your seniors now can instantly increase their rainy day savings. Their self-insurers, great. Your rainy day savings just got increased by up to 550%. Here's a nice little catchphrase when you're talking to potential clients, uh, existing clients about this. Hey, tax deferred into tax free. It's a powerful concept and, and catchphrase. Um, hey, seniors want to maintain their independence. Hey, just to rewind a little bit, one of the reasons retirees don't want to talk about long-term care, why it's the pink elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about, one of the biggest reasons is because they all know someone that's been in long-term care. It, they, they don't want to go to a nursing home. And after the nursing home, then what happens? Well, you're gone. So it's a tough subject to talk about. But what we're, the, the vast majority of these products that we, that we are marketing, that we're helping our agents with, vast majority of them, the, the, your client doesn't have to go to confinement. They don't have to be in a long-term care facility. They could be. They don't have to be. They can maintain their independence, have somebody come to their home to help them. So again, a few, because I'm throwing a lot of information at you, some statistics, but just how do we bridge the gap between the concept we're talking about here and, hey, sales for you guys when you're sitting in front of your clients and potential new clients. Some of the catchphrases, a perspective to look at this, tell your clients, hey, it's not like standalone long-term care insurance. If you don't use it, you do not lose it. You can 1035 from old annuities, leveraging up, making tax deferred, tax free, and even if they have if they have a a large annuity that they think it would be overkill to 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 1035 the whole thing in, you can do partial 1035s. Can add an eligible person if the um, older annuity is simply in one of their names. Um, they do have to be husband and wife for for that particular one. But look, guys, if you don't if you don't show this to your clients, somebody else is going to. And I, I don't want it to be the you know kind of the well, uh, it's the consolation prize. Maybe they couldn't get standalone long term care, or they've looked at it and don't want to try it. It, kind, it, it the reality of the matter is this is applicable to anyone that is in that age group had 50, really 50 plus, has no long-term care plan at all, um, and they have some assets, everybody needs to look at this. Powerful tools. I'm going to go into a life product. Rick, did you want to, are there some questions we should address on the annuity side? or? Uh, let, me, let me unmute myself here for a second. Uh, 
No, we got we got a few people. The, the, we will have uh, the as far as uh, state availability and those kind of things. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll answer all those uh, one on one with you. Most of these products are do have wide availability. Uh, there are a few tricky states, but for the most part, if you're on this webinar, we're going to have availability for most of the concepts, if not all the concepts Grace is talking about. Uh, and uh, there's been a couple questions about the replay of this uh, webinar. Yeah, we will have a uh, uh, recorded version available. So if you if you've either missed out getting started or you got to run now, we will have uh, we will have that for you. Um, okay. Yeah, as far as as far as the products go, I think we got a couple more questions about the source of funds on this, but I think you're probably going to clear up some of that stuff. Here. Yeah, because part of the thing, guys, is the, the really important thing. You're sitting down with your seniors, and I want you to again write our number down: the nine nine eight four eight zero nine nine eight twelve eighty six. I want you guys to call in because the big thing: how are we going to go from the concept to actually uh, designing a case in a sale? Well, we've got a questionnaire. We've got the asset-based care questionnaire. So I want you guys to call in and get that from us. And it's just a one-pager. You sit down with your client and you talk about, okay, their basic health situation. We're going to ask the questionnaire, ask the right questions. And also, hey, where, right now, Mr. and Mrs. Client, where is the money that you would use right now if you needed some help? Where is that money? So. The source of funds is really important. Get that on the questionnaire. Get that back to us, and we will help you design a case so you can see what's available for your client. So many different strategies out there between uh, annuities, different life products, a uh, bunch of different strategies. The source of funds is going to be very important on the best route to take. Now, I'm going to show you one of the life policies out there. Guys, th these days, uh, there are term policies, not even permanent insurance, term policies that, that uh, the policyholder can access for chronic illness. Um, so, so many different things. What I'm going to show you right here is a single premium whole life policy. Now, let's imagine you had a 65-year-old lady as a client. She's she just retired. She's got some assets. She has a hundred thousand dollars CD coming due, and she's sick of point four percent or whatever it is out there. She doesn't need this money for her month-to-month -month expenses, and she doesn't have it labeled that she's going to use that to buy a new car, put a new roof on her house. This, she says, you know, this is just uh, an asset. More than likely, my kids will get it unless something crazy happens to me. Well, perfect source of funds for this strategy. She brings it into the life product instead. She's going to get a day one 10% bonus, $110,000 of, of net premium day one. And hey, let me rewind for a second here. Do not look at $100,000 is not required for this product. I'm doing that for, for easy math. For a 65-year-old, you, you, know, you could do a $20,000 uh, premium. Just for easy math, $100,000 in one day, it almost doubles. And it almost doubles after tax, right? Life, death benefit of life insurance is income tax free. There's nothing new with that. But guys, the access to that death benefit for the policyholder tax free, that is new. Um, so really, the death benefit really becomes the new cash value. She has an asset that she wasn't going to use except for health type, you know, needs help situations. Well, why leave in a CD? This is a no-brainer. You can see there's some growth without risk. Um, the line just below 186000 dollars after 15 years. Growth without risk. You don't have to be Series 7 licensed to sell this. Um, but again, <coughs> the the in one day, the money is almost doubled after tax. And Rick, how long is somebody going to have to be in one of in these interest rates, an annuity or whatever investment product? How long is it going to take to double your money after tax? Well, uh, do the math. I mean, if if you're getting two and a half, three percent, and you're you're paying twenty ish in taxes, what's that going to take? Twenty five, thirty years to double your money after tax? Yeah, and you're doing it in one day right here. Mm -hmm. So what good is that to the policyholder? Well, check out the next line, guys. $6,000 chronic illness benefit paid out monthly over 33 months. 
it's really the death benefit becomes the new cash value. She's getting that money tax free. This is an indemnity. She doesn't have to justify expenditures of that six thousand dollars a month. She just gets six thousand dollars a month. She she has a tax free income stream. She can pay her grandchildren to come over and cook and clean for her. Her heirs are positioned for a larger tax free inheritance. Guys, get children involved in discussions about these products. They love it. <coughs> Again, very similar trigger. Licensed physician signing off. They need. Uh, assistance with two out of six activities of daily living for 90 days or more. A portion of the death benefit is going to get paid out over 33 months. Indemnity, not a reimbursement. They maintain their flexibility, their control of their money, their independence. Up to $250,000 of the death benefit can, on this particular policy, can be uh, accelerated back to the policy holder. So hey, instantly increase your estate's your client's estate while decreasing its uh, taxability. The heirs love this. They're positioned for a larger tax-free inheritance and if mom or dad needs help, there's more money to, to pay for it. So again, they are not losing control of their money. In the past, people look at life insurance. <coughs> Sorry guys. And it, it also, also keep in mind, and I probably should have said this at the offset, outset of the of the life portion of this be careful before you start talking about life insurance with a lot of your clients you need to set the stage and tell them look life insurance is changing this is life insurance you don't have to die to use the reason we're really using life insurance is because it's already a tax-free chassis um, the, the laws are loosening up so the policyholder can use that money themselves. And it's getting more and more liberal. Um, also, a lot of retirees, older generation people, when they think of life insurance, they think of continual premiums. And a lot of them got sold in the 80s universal life policies at incredibly higher interest rates that they are now they continue to pay premiums into and they, both the cash value and the death benefit are going lower while they are piling more premiums in. That is not the case with this policy. This, this can be a single premium and this is whole life. So there, that face value, there is absolutely no downside to it, no continual premiums coming in. Um, I do want to talk, and I, I'm going a little bit over our time here, guys, but again, there's so many different strategies, and I want to cover, there's a, a, a big percentage of your clients, potential clients that you talk to that really have some assets that they don't need for their monthly expenses. A lot of times, that's in a, pre, that's in a qualified account. It's pre-tax. It's an IRA. It's a 401k. So, <coughs> excuse me. I want you to know we still have some strategies for that. Now, <clears throat> this particular strategy is a seven premium life insurance version of the exact same single premium uh, policy that we just talked about. But just so you understand real quick how this goes, uh, let's say same 65-year-old lady is a client of yours, but instead of an older annuity or a CD, her money that she doesn't really need for month-to-month -month expenses is in an IRA. Well, here's what we do. We're going to take a $100,000 IRA. We are going to move that into a pre-tax immediate annuity. And that immediate annuity is going to be, it's automated by the carrier to pay in seven times into a life insurance policy. It's, it's a, it's a one-time sale. So you don't have to be there to ensure that your client's taking the annuity payment and putting it into the life insurance policy. This is this is automated by the carrier. And if, if this starts to get a little bit confusing, call us and we'll go back through it. But we are moving an IRA into a pre-tax annuity that's going to fund a seven premium life insurance policy. Now, your client is going to get 1099 in this case, almost $16,000 a year. So it's not tax avoidance, or it's not evasion of taxes. It's really avoiding a one-time big lump sum tax, spread the tax liability out. 
but check out the right side of my screen here. $176,000 instant death benefit, okay? She can still access that for chronic illness issues. There's still growth without risk in this thing. Can only ratchet higher. Um, in, in this particular case, you see the numbers after 10 years, good indexing. So it's kind of a Roth rollover alternative. You're spreading the tax liability out over seven years. Your client still has access to the money in the form of a monthly indemnity check. She doesn't have to justify expenditures. As long as she has a doctor signing off that she needs help, she's, she's maintaining her independence and spending that money however she cares to. Again, it's on a whole life chassis, so there's not downside risk to the face value. After those seven years, your client has a paid up life policy. And here's, here's a powerful concept. When you talk to your clients, uh, in, I, I mean, even some of you on the webinar, you probably have an IRA, a SEP IRA, uh, maybe a 401k from another job. You don't really look at that as your money. You think about maybe it's $100,000. Your money is sixty-five or seventy thousand dollars, somewhere in there. So if you were to convert it to money you could really use, you'd have to pay taxes. You'd turn a pool of pre-tax money into a smaller pool of after-tax money. With this concept, we are turning a pre-tax pool of money into a larger pool of after-tax money. Sit with that for a second. If if you if you spend time with your clients with this concept, a light bulb is going to go off over the uh, over some of their heads. Okay, this is powerful. The thing is, <clears throat> the concept of filtering IRA money out into a life policy for for wealth transfer to the next generation that's not new. That's been going on for years and years and years. The part that is new is the feds loosening up tax laws because now they realize they don't have they don't want to pay for your clients long term care so now the access to that new larger pool of after tax money that's in life insurance the access to it by the policyholder is the, this is new this is easy it's very liberal they need they have a doctor sign off and you saw my stats at the beginning of the webinar seventy percent of them are going to be in the place where they could have a, their doctor sign off that they need help <coughs> excuse me so the access to that death benefit that's the new part and that's the powerful concept you're turning qualified money into tax-free benefits and hey, it's wealth transfer if they never need to use the money, right? So the kids love it. Uh, the clients should love it. I mean, it's a win-win-win all the way across the board. Um, that, like I say, so many different uh, strategies out there and, and different uh, policies. Call us. Get that questionnaire. Get that questionnaire filled out with some of your clients, some of your potential clients and get that back to us. We'll help you build a case so you can see what is available for your clients out there. Rick, do we have some questions we need to address? Okay, nice job, Grayson. I think we've gotten through most of them. I think uh, now that you're talking about the asset-based que questionnaire, this is not a piece of magic. This is, this is going to clarify some of, the, some of the questions and some of the issues. On your asset-based care questionnaire, what you want to do is find out in a nutshell what your client's situation is. What, what funds do they have available? What is their health situation like? What, as in what products might they be able to qualify for? And what kind of designs might be available to us? And what do they want to see for an outcome? Are they more interested in wealth transfer? Are they more interested in maximizing how much care they have available or how much cash value they have available, those kind of things. So I think a little bit of the confusion from some of the questions will be cleared up when you see the asset-based care questionnaire and how we need and what kind of information we need to gather so we can design a case and recommend products that are going to best fit your client's situation and needs. So I, I think uh, other than that, Grayson, I think you picked up pretty much everything. We had a few state availability questions, and I did what I could to uh, answer those on a one-on-one -on -one here just with the tight chat. Um, and anything we didn't cover, yeah, go ahead and give us a call. Our marketers are available. 
uh, Grayson and I may be available. Uh, give give me a call. Give the staff here a call. We can we can straighten out whatever you need, and we can get you that questionnaire and whatever the product information and, and get you up and running here. Um, so uh, great presentation, Grayson. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, this is pretty much just stage one here. We need to we need to grasp the concepts we're working with, and then as far as uh, what products we're going to use and, and, and how all that's going to come into play. Trust me guys, that's going to fall into place a lot easier than you might think when you just get this this whole uh, mass information dumped on you. Uh, so if, if Grayson doesn't have anything else to add. Um, hey, that's about it. Hey, th thanks a lot for your time everybody. Uh, like Rick said, give us a call. And it really is going to take a lot better shape in your mind um, when you have a specific client that we can design a case for and show you what's available, see how the numbers work out. Okay, great. Thanks for spending your afternoon with us, guys, and uh, we'll be available.